Hey everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 45. In this tutorial we are going to uh, look at loading our first model from a uh, OBJ file. Now when we are using asymp to load models, uh, here is kind of, this is a terrible drawing, but just to give you an idea, in asymp when we load it, we are loading from the model file and we get back a scene. And the scene is made up of nodes. And each node can have, it can have meshes, and it can have nodes. And those nodes, you know, as you go down, they can have meshes and nodes and repeating forever. For now, when we are loading in these models, we are going to have it set up so we have our model class, and our model class will be made up of all of the meshes involved with that model. And we are going to have an index buffer and a vertex buffer associated with each mesh. In this tutorial, we are not going to focus on the different textures associated with each mesh. We are going to load in the texture uh, UV data for the uh, main texture, but we are not actually going to look into loading in each individual texture. We will do that in the next tutorial. In the uh, data folder and the objects folder, I have included this nano suit uh, 3D model, I believe it's from Crisis. Uh, the license from where I downloaded this said it's for personal use only. So hopefully uh, I don't get in trouble for redistributing this, but you just keep in mind um, this is just for personal use. You can't use this in any commercial use. So back inside of our project, let's first go ahead and create a new header for our mesh class. It's going to go in the graphics folder, and we are going to call it mesh. And let's also create a new CPP and have that called mesh. And the first thing we'll do in the CPP is include our mesh header. Next, let's go up to uh, show all files so that we can drag these two new files up to our mesh folder. Or not our mesh folder, to our graphics folder and then we are going to uncheck show all files. So we know that our model will contain multiple meshes, or, or it could be one mesh, but regardless, we know that the model will contain the meshes. So we're going to take all of these includes out of our model header and just include the mesh header. And then inside of our mesh header, we can put those includes that we had in the model header. Let's go ahead and start our mesh class. Inside of our model, we know that uh, we could have multiple meshes. So let's go down and we're just going, in our private, we're going to have a vector of our meshes. Now let's go back to our mesh header. And there are a few things that we are going to set up for our mesh. The first thing is we're going to have our constructor, and our constructor will take in the D3D device, our device context, our vertices, and our indices. In the future, this will also take in the texture, or textures rather, because you could have multiple textures for one mesh. We are going to have a copy constructor so that we can create functions that return a mesh. We are going to have a draw function. And then we are just going to store the vertex buffer, index buffer, and device context. We are not storing the device because this will only be used for initializing the uh, vertex buffer and index buffer. But we are storing the device context because we will use this when we draw. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, constructor. So we're going to create the definition. And the constructor will be very similar to uh, what we've seen before. We are going to uh, store the device context. And then we are going to initialize the vertex buffer using the vertex data that gets passed in. And then we are going to initialize the index buffer using the indices data that gets passed in. And, you know, if either of these fail, we will throw a com error. Next, let's look at our copy. And for this, it's pretty straightforward. 
We are just copying the three private members inside of our mesh class. And you'll see that we actually get an error when we try to copy the vertex buffer. So the reason is because we don't have a proper um, way to copy our vertex buffers currently. So this will need to be modified. So let's go ahead and do this before we move on to drawing. Let's go to the vertex buffer header. And inside of the vertex buffer, originally, I'm not sure why, I guess I just thought it would never be copied since we were using a unique pointer, but the copy constructor was under private. So first let's remove this. And since we'll need to be able to copy, we can't use a unique pointer. Uh, we have to use a shared pointer. So we're going to change the stride to be uh, stored as a shared pointer. Now when we go down to where we are initializing the stride, since before we were using make unique, we need to change this to be make shared since we are using a shared pointer now. And now we just need to make the um, template copy constructors. So for these, we just have these two uh, constructors and it's pretty simple what's going on here. We are just copying the members for the buffer stride and buffer size and then returning the vertex buffer. And what this will allow us to do is now you see we are not getting an error when we try to uh, copy the vertex buffer. Next, the last thing we have to set up for our mesh is drawing. Let's go ahead and create the definition. And we, what we are going to do here is similar to what we were doing before in our model CPP. So let's take a look at that just for a refresher. When we were drawing in our model CPP, more importantly uh, down here, we were setting the index buffer, setting the vertex buffer, and we were calling draw index. So in our mesh CPP, we are going to do the same thing. We will uh, just create a variable to store uh, the offset since that's one of the required parms. And then we will set the vertex buffer, the index buffer, and then we will call draw index exactly like how we did it in the model CPP previously. So now we have our mesh class set up However, we still don't have a way to load the models. So for now, we are going to do this inside of our model header. But before we do that, we're going to add a few includes into our mesh header so that we can load the models using asim. And we're going to include the importer header, the post process header, and the scene header. Now let's go into our model header and let's work on setting it up so that we can actually load a model. So first off for initialize, we're going to change this to take in a file path. And then we will have to go down to the constructor in the CPP and modify that. Let's see. And what we are going to do is uh, before we were just hard coding uh, vertex and index data here to make the cube, and we were, you know, creating the vertex and index buffer here, we're going to take that out, and inside of the try catch, we're going to call um, a new function that we'll make that will return a boolean for true or false called load model. And this is going to take in the file path as well. So up in our model header, right under where we declared our vector of meshes, let's go ahead and add this declaration for load model, and let's generate the definition. And here is where we are going to begin importing our actual model. So first we are going to uh, create an importer object from ASIM, and then we are going to call read file on the file path. So what this is, is we are importing the scene into an AI scene object. The first argument is the file path, and the second argument is um, flags for importing. So we want to triangulate it because in some 3D files, it might be stored as quads, and we need it stored in triangles. 
So what this will do is convert it to triangles if it's not. Also, we are converting it to left-handed because DirectX, by default, uses a left-handed coordinate system. Some uh, 3D files will be stored in a right-handed coordinate system, which uh, will, it won't be the same. So that's why we are converting it to left-handed. If the pointer to the scene is null, so if um, we call read file and we get back null, then it failed to import it, we'll just return false. Otherwise, if it did not return null, we are going to begin processing the first node, which is called the root node from the scene. And our process node function is going to take in a node and it's going to take in a scene. And the idea, if we go back to our image at the beginning, you know, we know that our nodes can also contain nodes. So we're going to process the first scene, or process the first node in the scene. And then inside of that node, if it has any other nodes, we will also process those afterwards. So next, um, it should be clear, we need to create uh, a process node function. So let's go back to our model header. And our process node will take in the node that we are processing. And then it will take in the scene. Let's go ahead and generate this definition. And the way that this will work is first we will go through for the node, we will go through all the meshes in this node. And we are going to get the mesh. And then we are going to call process mesh and push that back into our meshes vector. So we still need to make this process mesh to actually process uh, the mesh. But before we do that, let's just take a look at what else we'd have to do. Then we're going to go through all of the nodes inside of this node. They're called child nodes because this node is like the parent and all of its offspring are the child nodes. We are going to go through all the child nodes and we are going to process them individually. So we are getting close to done with this. We just have to set up uh, processing the mesh. So now we need to make a new function. And this function, since we are pushing back into our meshes vector, it will have to return a mesh. So let's go and set up the process mesh uh, function. All right, and let's create the definition for that. So we know that for our mesh currently, we are storing vertex data and index data. So we will have to fill in a vector of vertices and a vector of indices. For getting the vertices, it's not too complicated. What we will do is we will have a for loop where we iterate through all of the vertices in this mesh. The number of vertices is stored in the num vertices member. We are going to create a new vertex object. We are going to store the x, y, and z positions as pulled from the uh, vertices at this index for this mesh. Next, we are going to see if this mesh has a texture. And for now, we are just going to assume that every mesh does have a texture and we're not going to do anything uh, special if it doesn't. So if the mesh uh, has a texture, then we are going to get the x, y coordinates um, for each uh, vertex. Now, it's important to note, in case you're wondering, why are we looking at uh, index 0 for the texture coordinates? Well, the main texture for the object should always be the first texture. However, there might be other textures for uh, bump mapping, um, all kinds of things. So that is why we are looking at the very first index, it is because that is where the main texture will be stored. Once we have got the position and texture data, we are going to uh, push that back into our vertices vector. Next, we need to get the index data, and that's actually uh, even simpler. What we are going to do for that is we are just going to iterate over all of the faces in the mesh. And each face, keep in mind, should be a triangle since when we imported it, we had the flag. Let me scroll up. We had the flag to triangulate. So they should all be triangles. And um, basically, we're going through each face and we are pushing back the indices into our index uh, indices vector. Now that we have our vertices and our indices, 
we can generate this mesh. So we are just going to call the mesh constructor and we pass in the device, device context, the vertices, and the indices. So I believe we are almost done. However, there is there are two things we have to change. And one of them will be obvious. We need to change the draw function in the model. So let's see where that is. We have a lot of functions in this and that will change soon. But all right, so in our draw function, currently we were using the index buffer and vertex buffer stored in the model. And we don't need these anymore because the that data is actually stored in the meshes now. So we will just iterate over every mesh and we will draw them. Now let's go back into our model header and we can actually take out the vertex and index buffer. And now when we go to run this, it will not run, but the reason why uh, it's not obvious. So let's see, let's see what error message we get. Well, actually there's two reasons. One, I didn't update where we are initializing the model to take in the file path. So let's fix that first. So when we initialize the model, now we have to pass in the file path to the object. So the object that we are using is going to be in data, objects, nano suit, and it's nano suit.obj. So we'll put data, objects, nano suit, nano suit.obj. So now when we try to compile this, let's see what errors we get. Okay, so we get these errors and they have to do with using this min define. And the problem with this is that min is actually defined in the windows header and we don't want it to be defined. So there's a preprocessor definition that we could add to stop this. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could find the very first place that we include windows and we could define no uh, min max and this will stop the windows header from defining min and max. However, I'd rather do it inside of our preprocessor definitions for the project because if the if a windows ever gets defined somewhere else before, you know, then we'd have to change it again and waste time on that. So if we go to our properties and we we make sure we're in all platforms, all configurations. Or actually, no, we can't do it for that. We'll have to do it individually for each one. Let's go to the C++ preprocessor tab. And you see it says different options because they have different options. So let's go to debug x64. And we are going to add no min max. Hit apply. Now let's go to release. We're going to add, oops, no min max. Press apply. Now let's do the same thing for Win32. And the same thing for debug in Win32. Alright, let's give this a test. I think I think it should run. Okay, there we go. And you see we have this uh, that's the nano suit object. Of course, it doesn't have the right textures. We're still using the previous texture. So it looks kind of weird. But yeah, we loaded in that 3D model and that's pretty cool, I guess. Let's see what it would look like with a um, with a grass texture. Let's see when we initialize the model instead of passing in the pavement texture. Let's pass in the grass. See what that looks like. Oh, OK. Well, that's kind of weird, but yeah. So that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, uh, it should be pretty short. We're just going to go over importing the actual textures for this model. Well, the main texture, not all the extra crap, but inside of here, you'll see we have uh, the diffuse textures, what it's really called. I'm, I'm saying main texture, but this, for example, is part of the diffuse texture and it will be mapped to the model before anything else is done. So yeah, that's all that we are covering for right now and thanks for watching.